Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, this is the Dynamics Post. My name is Scott Gaines, and each week I put out a new video with some Dynamics 365 content, some process or procedure that you do in Dynamics 365. So if this kind of content interests you, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified when I upload a new video. So this week what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the transportation management module. We're going to take a look at the outbound process. We're going to do a pretty high level overview. There's a lot of nooks and crannies in this thing. So I want to give a good um, high level overview. And then in the next couple of weeks, the next couple of blog posts, we'll actually go through and, and do a deeper dive into each of these little pieces. So hang on and we'll start when we get right back. Okay, so like I said, today we're gonna to be doing the outbound process using the transportation module. So who's the transportation module for? Um, it's for if you have your own vehicles or you hire out uh, transportation companies to provide transportation of your goods from your warehouses to a hub or to the end customer. But so what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take a look at just the outbound process like I said, there's a lot of intricacies to this, so we're going to use a pretty um, easy example, very, very simple example. Um, and it, anybody that wants to go into a deeper dive over the next couple of weeks, I'll be doing uh, more videos on, on different uh, subjects there so that we can see, get deeper into the transportation module. Okay, so there's going to be the general overall process for the transportation module is you're going to first, you're going to create a sales order and reserve the items on that sales order. And then you're gonna go into the load planning workbench and you're gonna get a rate and a carrier for that uh, load. You're gonna create a load and get the rate and, and the carrier for that load. Then you're gonna release it to the warehouse using the warehouse management functionality. And then you're gonna follow the warehouse management process, go all the way through the confirmation of the shipment, printing of the packing list, etc., And then uh, go ahead and invoice the sales order and then the last step is to reconcile the uh, shipper invoice to the amount uh, that you planned on. So, you know, if your rate was $1,000 or whatever, you want to make sure that your shipper invoice is $1,000. So the first thing let's do, let's go ahead and look at the example setup on this. So let's do that next. So to start off today, we're going to take a look at some of the records we're going to be using. So I'm going to go to warehouses first. So I'm just going to go under warehouse management, set up warehouse, and let's go ahead and look at the warehouses. And the warehouse I'm going to be using today is uh, 24, which has a uh, postal code of 98401. All right. And then the account that I'm going to be using today, let's go to accounts receivable, and we'll go to customers. And the account is US 004 Cave Wholesales. And if we look at that address, the uh, postal code for that one, zip code is 31001. Now, additionally, I've set up a new um, shipping carrier and transportation management. I'm not going to cover that today. I'm just going to kind of show you some basics on that, but uh, we'll do in another video how these shipping carriers are set up because this can kind of get deep in the setup. But just... Just know that, that I've set up this new shipping carrier called Swift. Uh, they've got a standard service. Um, if we look at, um, if let's look at the rate master, which determines what's actually charged. So in here in the rate master, I've got a uh, or, origin uh, postcode is 98401, which is our warehouse, and our destination is 31001. And then if I look at the rate base, um, so less than 50 miles is 4.3, less than 100 miles is 3.3. This is the amount that's going to be charged. So I'm going to go ahead and um, actually let's change this around here a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and edit this. Let's just make this a little bit more. So I'm going to go 10, 9. This is the amount that it's going to be charged. So basically what it's going to do is, um, what it's going to do is going to determine the, the amount of miles between the two uh, uh, postal codes. And then it will multiply that mileage by this rate to get the dollar amount and the currencies in U.S. dollars here. Okay. So again, I know that's just quick and a very high level, but we'll we'll do this in another video as far as what all you need to set up as far as the uh, the shipping carrier to get the the base rate. Okay. So then the next thing we'll do, we're going to go in and for our sales order, we'll go ahead and do that now. We'll go and create that. So we'll go to sales and marketing. 
all sales orders and I'll create a new one and we're going to use our US 004 account and again I want to make sure that I'm in warehouse 224 or warehouse 24 site 2 and our item that we're going to use is our A0001 and we're going to do 10 of those let's just say that they're um, 110 a piece Oops, I'm going into my pricing quantity unit price is going to be 110 okay so that'll get our setup done all right so that was the example setup I know it's really high level and there's a lot of other setup that's kind of underneath that I promise you we'll kind of go into that later I just want to get us at a very high level at this point so what we're going to do next is we're going to go into the um, sales um, and marketing module. We're going to create a sales order. We're going to go load planning workbench, and we're going to we're going to start uh, doing the example here. So let's go ahead and go into the uh, sales and marketing create a sales order. The first thing we're going to want to do here is once we get our example done, is we're going to go into the inventory. We're going to create a reservation just like you would uh, for um, warehouse management. The first thing you have to do is just create a reservation. You don't have to do that before you can release anything, right? So we're going to go ahead and do that. And in a lot of our other videos where we're doing warehouse, we would go ahead and do release to warehouse. But what we're going to do today is we're going to go to the load planning workbench. So we're going to click on the load planning workbench. And so the first step is to create a load. So what this is going to do is it's going to show us uh, the lines there on the, on the sales order. So quantity of 10 for our A0001. And it's also going to show us the existing loads down here that haven't been... Um, and then completed or right, let's let's go ahead and hide that so we don't see the ones that have been uh, completed so it's going to show us our existing loads down here as well all right so we have the option if we go up to the supply and demand we can create a new load or we can add to an existing load today we're going to create a uh, put this line to a new load uh, but we could uh, select the load down here and, and add it to it all right so i'm going to go ahead and check this line here go to supply and demand and then i'm going to say i want to go to a new load with that and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to choose a template ID. Um, you know, I've got a 20 foot container, a 40 foot container. Let's just do, I don't know, we'll just do the standard load. It's probably going to tell me I'm overweight but on this one, but that's fine. So we're going to hit OK, and there it is. It's going to tell me that uh, my weight or volume exceeds the capacity. Uh, this load template has a capacity on it that I'm exceeding, but I'm just going to go ahead and go on past that. All right. So at this point, we've got a load, and if, if you're familiar with warehouse, management this hasn't been released to the warehouse yet or anything like that we basically have just created a load there's not even a shipment created for this one yet again if you're familiar with the warehouse management side of things so once we have our load the next step we want to do so step two is to kind of create a uh, is to is determine who's going to be the shipper and, and what their rate is so we're going to go to the rating and routing workbench here so we're going to click on rating and routing and then go to the rate route workbench and you'll see that all of the uh, pertinent information has been filled in from the sales order, the from, and the to. So in the initial example setup, I told you we were going from Warehouse 24, which is the 98401 postal code, to the 31001 postal code. So when we go ahead and hit the Rate Shop button up here, that's what's going to give us. Uh, it's going to be looking at the different uh, criteria that's set up for these, postal, for these shipping carriers. Um, again, for my Swift carrier, it's really only looking at these the postal codes here. So if we look at what was returned, it will see that 7 out of 10 uh, records returned with exceptions. So I'm hiding the exceptions here. If I wanted to see the exceptions, I could unclick this, and it would show all of the all of the uh, different carriers that that are on for, that we have. So. You notice though that, that these don't have any rates associated with them. And if I scroll to the right, um, there's no transit days. If you want to know why it, it didn't return any value, you can click on it and then and view exception details here. And it'll it'll tell you. Um, so it'll just say, so this, it couldn't find the right assignment for these postal codes or, or a match there for that. So it didn't return any value. So generally, I'm just going to hide the exceptions so I only see the ones that, are, that I really want to see. So let's take a look at what was actually returned. So here's the, the one that I created, the Swift. A parcel carrier was also returned and a rail carrier was also returned. So it'll give you the rate. So here's the, the, the total rate um, and the miles. So remember I, I told you, just gonna multiply the, uh, the miles times the, the rate amount. 
and it's going to give us that value there. And then gives us the transit days, how many days it's going to take to get there. Okay, so again, some of this is set up that we'll cover in another video, but uh, just want to give you the kind of the results of the setup here at this point. So we are going to go in and choose our our Swift carrier. So after you view the the rates and the amount of days, um, you know maybe for whatever reason we're going to choose Swift, even though it's not the lowest. Um, but you could you know normally you'd probably be looking for the lowest here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and choose Swift, and then we're going to go ahead and hit assign. And that's going to assign uh, Swift to our uh, to our load there. So if I scroll to the right here, it's, it's assigned Swift um, to that one there. Okay, so I'm going to exit out of that screen. It gets me back to the rate route workbench. I'm going to exit out of this screen here. All right, so now we've got our sales order created, and we've got our inventory reserved. We've gone into the planning workbench and uh, the load planning workbench and we've uh, assigned a carrier to it. So now we're going to kind of take over what we've seen before on on how to do the uh, going to release the sales order to a warehouse and do the normal warehouse sales order picking. Now that our rate um, has been assigned and we've got our shipping carrier, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to release this to the warehouse and we can do this right from here. If we click on the release, uh, we can go ahead and hit release to warehouse. Um, it's going to pull up the release to warehouse job, and we can uh, just run that job, and that will do our release for us. All right, and so that's created the release of the warehouse. You notice we've got a shipment now down here, and we can go over to the related information, and we can take a look at the work details. So it's asking us to pull um, 10 of the A 1 uh, from floor location 1 and put that into the bay door. So let's go ahead and I'll, I'll copy this work ID here and we'll go ahead and do that step next. So we'll go ahead and log into the uh, mobile device and we'll go ahead and paste that work ID in there. And the license plate it's at is 24. So I'm going to say OK to that. And I'm generating a two license plate automatically. Say OK here. And then it's just telling us to put it to the bay door. Let's say OK there. All right. So we come back to our work now. When we hit refresh here, the work will now be closed. All right, so the next step, um, so we've got our work um, loaded. So our shipment has been loaded. Um, so we can, right from here, we can go ahead and confirm the shipment. So let's confirm the outbound shipment and say, okay. And I've got hide, shipped, and received checked here. So I'm gonna uncheck that here in a second. So, cause it, you know, if we refresh this here, it's gonna, disappear because it's already been shipped. So we'll go ahead and uncheck that so we see it again. And also from right here, we can go ahead and we can generate our uh, bill of lading, for example. Let's go ahead and we'll do that. We'll, we can generate a bill of lading. There's our bill of lading uh, from Warehouse 24 to Cave Wholesales for 10 of the A001. Okay. And then we can also generate our packing slip from here. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll bring that print to the screen. All right, so then we have our packing slip uh, for our A001 for 10. And then we can also now, I'm going to go, so we're still in the load planning workbench. If I go out of the load planning workbench, I can see the, um, the, the amount of, freight that was added to this. So if I click on the line here, it's actually, it is done by the line level and then come over to financials. I can go look at the uh, maintain charges. It just, it's just a charge that's added. And uh, so it's description, charges code is used as freight and then the rate is swift for carrier. And then it's the charges value is $1,800. Okay. So from this point, um, it's just a, the same, um, process that you would normally use. If we go to invoice, we can go ahead and let's go ahead and generate an invoice for the item. Say okay. Just have this print to the screen. All right, so here's our invoice to the screen and we've got um, $1,100 for the item and then there's our freight for $1,800 there. Okay. 
And then so the very last step that we want to do is we want to reconcile the freight bill. So, you know, maybe a week or two later, it comes back and you get a, fr bill, a freight bill from the... Um, from the carrier. So I'm just going to go back to the load planning workbench and do it from here. And if I go over to, so this puts me into my load. I can go into the related information and put in freight bill details. And then what I can do is click this generate freight bill invoice. And what this, what that does is, uh, let's just say that this is Swift. That's just the invoice number. What it's going to do is it's going to copy the the details into the into the freight bill. So if we're manually doing this, it's going to copy all the details into the freight bill, so we don't have to enter all that information in there. Okay. So here's our net amount is eighteen hundred dollars. Um, all right. So then, the, so what we're going to do now is we're going to match the freight bills. Make sure they match. And we're going to go match freight bill invoice, and we're going to go down. You scroll down to the bottom here. And the one we're going to use here is Swift. This is the one we're going to match. And then we're going to match it. All right. And then we will uh, submit for approval. Now, obviously, if the, you know, you could change the amount here, you know, maybe it would, we thought it was going to be $1,800 and, um, and the actual invoice was $1,825. You can change the amount and there's some different matching that you can uh you can do. We'll cover the more more detail of the freight bill matching in a, in a later video, but I just want to show you kind of the process here. All right, so we've, we've matched that uh, freight bill up. Let me go ahead and close this, and uh, we can close this, and close this. All right, so I went a little bit too far, so I want to go back to um, my related information and I'll go back to my freight bill details. What I was going to show you is that I can choose the uh, and take a look at the vendor invoice journal. So there's the journal number. I'll click on that. It shows me the journal. It hasn't been posted yet. You'd follow your normal processes for actually posting this journal. But uh, we can go look at the lines here on the journal. And then we have our $1,800 on that. All right, so I hope that you can see that the transportation module kind of works hand in hand with the warehouse module. You know, it, it, basically you're getting a, a load and then rating that load. That's the transportation module, but really the, the rest of it as far as the release of the warehouse, that's the normal warehouse management uh, stuff that you've been, we've been doing for, for a while now. And I will mention too that there's a lot of these steps, these can be automated. You know, we use the load planning workbench, but there's actually a, a, a tool that you can use to automatically create loads and we'll, we'll kind of look at that uh, later as well. And just different, as everything in, in Dynamics, you know, there's batch jobs that can run to do certain steps for you if you want to, and we'll, we'll take a look at those as well. So I hope you found some, some value in this, this, this overview of the sale, outbound sales processing with transportation management. If you did, please give the video a like or thumbs up. Again, I put out a video every Tuesday, so be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get uh, notified when I upload a new video, okay? So again, we'll be on this topic for a little while. The next, next several uh, videos will be on transportation management. So again, please subscribe. And until next week, thanks for watching.